you pray with me, please? God, open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, our minds to know you, and our hearts to love you. Amen. Who in the world am I? That's the great puzzle. I'm quoting from the third most quoted piece of literature of all time, second only to the Bible and Shakespeare. It's the children's story of Alice in Wonderland. I was surprised by this. If you were playing one of those which doesn't belong games, surely you'd pick Alice as the odd one out. I've yet to find a Bible verse with smoking caterpillars and disappearing cats. The story of Alice has had remarkable staying power from its 1865 inception, largely due to its incomparable way of speaking to both children and adults. When researching the history of Alice, I was amazed at how many children and adults both found things to relate to in their own rights. If you're not familiar with Alice or don't remember, it's about a little girl who daydreams and follows a white rabbit down a rabbit hole. She enters a place called Wonderland where everything is crazy, illogical, and out of order. Alice has to change her physical size multiple times just to fit through doors. The doors are first too big, and then they're first, and then they're secondly too small. She drinks all these mystery liquids given to her by passive-aggressive talking doorknobs. The Cheshire cat is useful until he disappears behind a creepy smile. There's a psycho mad hatter running around, and the white rabbit she followed in the first place just flat out ignores her in preference of serving her tea and singing the unbirthday song. Every attempt that Alice makes to figure out a way home only results in nonsense and frustration. Every time she tries to get in a word, edgewise, erratic and scary creatures interrupt her with more nonsense that only confuses her further. I think that Alice illustrates for us what the world feels like without God. It's a scary and confusing place where you never know exactly where you stand. We are never quite on firm footing. What is right? What is wrong? How do we know? Am I right? Am I wrong? Is this a daydream or a nightmare? And perhaps most importantly of all, who am I? In a familiar story with Matthew, Jesus says, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. God clearly doesn't intend for us to actually become children again or think like a child, but he's referring to the traits in which children possess, and those being humility, curiosity, kindness. We should take these on as adults, but in order to do that, we often have to go through several wonderlands first. And it is also not linear. We may feel what it's like to be disconnected from God, we may find our way back to him only to fall back into the rabbit hole again. God says, start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. The only reason we have the story of Alice is because of a child. The real Alice is named Alice Little and was a vivacious, opinionated kind of girl. She was fiercer and more hyper than others. Alice in Wonderland was born when Mr. Dodson, or Lewis Carroll, as he's more famously known, took Alice and her sisters on boat rides, and he would make these stories up on the top of his head to entertain them. And so one day he told the story of Alice's adventures in Wonderland, and Alice Little loved it so much, she insisted he write it down. He had no intention of doing that. He had a busy career. He didn't see the point. Alice insistently badgered Mr. Dodson to write the story down. He refused repeatedly, and he eventually gave in and gave it to her as a gift. So the story Alice in Wonderland was born. Carol's Wonderland was never meant, was never written with the idea that it would be read by millions of people worldwide. It really wasn't meant to be told ever again after that one day. 
But a child stood up for what she wanted. She thought that book was awesome, darn it, and she was going to make him write it. Carol intended the story to challenge the conformist society they lived in at the time. The book opened new doors for children at a time where they were not allowed to be much of actual people. Children, and especially girls in the mid-1800s, were not allowed to be free thinkers, to explore an identity and to discover their talents. You might be surprised to learn that although the book is titled after Alice Little, it's not about her at all. Lewis Carroll made a point to mention the book's not about Alice when he was asked. And if you really study the man, Alice in Wonderland represents Lewis Carroll as a child. He was a big brother to nine sisters and took it very seriously. And some speculate that he never really left childhood. And so perhaps it's not a coincidence that Alice is most closely tied to the theme in English classes of identity and how it's never straightforward as it seems. Picking up from that first line, who in the world am I? Alice continues, I can't explain myself, sir, because I'm not myself. Faced with an environment unlike her current one above ground, in Victorian society underground, in Wonderland, societal conventions and rules are effectively eliminated. But the changes, the bodies, her body is changing size, she can't remember things, and she wholeheartedly believes at the beginning of the story that she lacks her own identity. At one point, she says that she's fond of pretending to be two people. Her grip on reality is tenuous, even for a child. Alice's changes in size further challenge her self-image. She asks herself, was I the same when I got up this morning? And goes on to question whether she might be, in fact, another child entirely. And character after character, some quite uh, scary for kids' stories. I don't know if you remember the lines with the queens when she says, off with your head. Uh, pretty terrifying. These, cha these characters challenge Alice's identity as she struggles to anchor herself. And time and time again, the different characters pester her and even yell at her to give them answers. Who are you? As the story continues, Alice's confidence in her identity grows. And in the final scene of the book, Alice confidently says her name when asked who she is. She stands up and vanquishes the queen, declaring, you are nothing but a deck of cards, nothing to be scared of at all. And then she wakes up and is back safely in her sister's arms. Alice didn't change herself while she was under in Wonderland. She didn't find a new identity by being in Wonderland. She realizes that she has always been Alice. She just needed to feel like she lost herself to find herself again. Wonderland is the nightmare, and God is the gentle voice of her sister when she wakes her up to comfort her. Wonderland represents a world that we've all been in one time or another. Some of us might dip in and out. Others may feel like they're always living in Wonderland. Have you ever felt like Alice before? We may doubt ourselves even with harmless questions from others. What do you do for a living? What's your story? How did you two meet? or my favorite ones that teen complains about, teens complain about, how was school today? <laughs> well, let me tell you about it, Mom. I just can't wait to share. It's never been said. <laughs> Our identity can also be challenged by deeper questions. What are you wearing? Why don't you have more followers? What makes you special? You think you know what it's like to hurt like I do? Why did I marry you? So you doubt, and thoughts of your own version of Wonderland come creeping in your head. But God says, don't listen to that. I like you just the way you are. Wonderland is just a dream. It's just a dream. He will try and help anchor you to him no matter how long you resist or what the world does until you vanquish those flimsy queens of hearts poking at your self-esteem. 
We may feel like they are more, but all they are sometimes is a deck of cards, flimsy, not holding much weight, and easily thrown away and taken by the wind. Like Alice, we must learn to listen to who to listen to and who to block out, who is out to help us and who is out to hurt us. When I was a little child, I used to have nightmares. My dreams were so vivid, I would wake up terrified. I'd run to my parents' room in the middle of the night. And at times, I would be fully awake, but I would hear this voice almost yelling at me. It was almost like I was in a nightmare while still being awake, but it was still going on, and I'd be talking to my parents and walking around. And this is actually a rare childhood phenomenon known as Alice in Wonderland syndrome where alterations of visual perceptions are found and how you see people's bodies and their facial expressions, and you can even hear things in your head. It's a very brief thing that happens in childhood, and then it just goes away. If you feel like you're lost in Wonderland, remember that God molded you in his hands, and he'll never lose sight of your identity. I could tell you my adventures, beginning from this morning, said Alice, a little timidly, but it's no use going back to yesterday because I was a different person then. Explain all that, said the mock turtle. No, no, the adventures first, said the griffin in an impatient tone. Explanations take such a dreadful time. It's okay to go out there and live life and have adventures without overthinking and explaining away, because we know we are already found in Christ. So don't think too much and try to explain it to yourself. That's what God's cross is for. So we could have adventures. Explanations take such a dreadful time. Amen.